Hello, we're diving right back in with episode two. The day of the nameless anonymous's birthday party. It's like a dream. That's supposed to mean something good, right? As in, I never expected a present like this. It's like a dream. In any case, I'm currently in a room even fancier than Pacifica's place. The fireplace is so warm, and it's a different sort of warmth compared to electric heating. I'm eating ham. We all are, actually. There's a ham as big as my head on the table, and we're eating it with gusto for some reason. The world is silent, save for the clattering of tableware, the chewing of ham, and the occasional crackling of firewood. Wait, why does she have a gun to that nun's head? Okay. It's almost as if everything outside of this room has been annihilated, and the world exists only for us to eat ham. And when I say this, I mean... Me. An unfamiliar girl. And a crying nun with a bloody nose. She's the one eating the most. The situation is very much like a dream. The softness of the high pile rug seems to numb my senses. It's like a dream. I ponder that thought again. The situation we're in is indeed like a dream. But is that a good thing? It certainly doesn't feel like a good thing. I'm, I am cracking up looking at this illustration. At least that's what I think to myself as I prod the nun's temple with my pistol. Wow, <laughs> what happened there? Okay, that was uh, that was a mysterious start to our second episode. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> into it. I remembered something. Just that it happened. I don't remember how I felt about it or anything. It was as if I were simply watching a slideshow in an empty audiovisual room, completely disinterested. Huh. Did that happen? For real? As soon as I start to question it, my body feels like it's floating. My limbs clench for something to grab onto, and then I find myself on the bed. I had woken up. Was that a dream? That was strange. I space out for a while, but then I remember what I have to do and get out of bed. I gotta go to Pacifica's place. Pacifica wanted to throw a welcome party for the new ghost in town, which I thought was an interesting idea. Pacifica also wanted to patch things up between me, her, and Anya. My outfit is simple, it doesn't take me long to get ready. I just need to put on my coat and I'm good to go. That's one lackadaisical amnesiac ghost ready to go. But when I grab the doorknob, it feels much chillier than usual. I hope I can start filling the void inside me, at least a little. Hopefully I'm not so empty that the wind blows me away. I head outside. It's been a long time since I've gone outside during peak ghost hours instead of leaving close to dawn. In fact, it's been so long, I've forgotten when the last time was, which means it might as well be my first time. As expected, the ghosts are taking their distance from me. So I walk as quietly as I can, even trying to stifle the sound of my steps on the snow. I try my best to smile and be the friendliest ghost I can be. I'm trying to interact with other ghosts more, so I need to get used to it. And I need them to get used to me. I don't know if I can, but I have to try. I still hate it when people look at me, though. Even if they don't say anything, it makes my skin tingle. It's as if gazes have mass. In fact, gazes are kinda like ghosts. Not exactly sure how to elaborate on that thought, but they just are. Well, in any case, it looks like it'll take quite a bit of time for me to get used to walking around in public. Once I take a turn off of Main Street and get to a somewhat quiet residential area, I instantly feel relieved. It's much easier for me to walk when there aren't many people around. Pacifica's house is at the end of this long street. Almost there. 
The path to Pacifica's house requires passing through Main Street. It's always a little tough getting here. I wish Anya could have picked me up. She can drive. But ever since that incident, I think it's best not to get her in a car. That said, if she still had that car and gave me a ride, that'd be nice. I know it's an unreasonable hope, but I'm free to imagine. If I can imagine things like that, then I guess I'm relatively calm. I'm suddenly caught off guard when someone calls out to me. I nearly jump out of my skin, and that's when I realize how careless I had been. You got the time, little missy? A scraggly voice calls out to me like the sound of someone prying open the rusty trunk of a totaled car. It's so grating and abrupt, it makes me shiver a bit. It's the old man. Yes, old man, I do have time. I give him a weird answer without thinking. How embarrassing. It's because he caught me off guard. I mean, what time is it? I suppose I misplaced my them there wristwatch. The owner of the voice is sitting on the walkway, leaning on the side of the building with his legs out. If I had to describe the old man in one word, that'd be... dirty. He's literally sitting on dirt, so he looks even dirtier. It's hard to fathom in a town like this, but he appears to be homeless. Um... If he doesn't have a home, he probably doesn't have a bathtub either. That said, I've got both a home and a bathtub, and I rarely bathe, so I guess I'm not one to talk. So, do I look this disgusting to other people? Oof. How do I explain this? This town doesn't do clocks. The very concept of the passage of time doesn't exist here, so we don't have calendars or clocks. We just have a physiological sense of what time it is, I guess. I had never really thought about it. Maybe it's just me being stupid and everyone else does indeed have clocks and schedules to keep up with. I feel kind of lonely when I think about it like that. Could have sworn I had it, but it's gone now. What a bummer. It was always accurate and liable. Told me when it was waking time, lunch time, and that time, of course. The old man's accent is so thick, it's a little hard for me to understand. When he stops talking, it gets real quiet. I can hear the bustling of Main Street in the distance. It's like the roar of waves. My ears start to ring. Honestly, I don't feel like talking for long. I could just run away from it all, but I want to be a good and proper ghost. So I decide to answer him honestly. I don't have a watch, so ask someone else. Please? Okay. Bye. I start walking before I finish talking. Hold her right there! <laughs> I freeze at his sudden yell. My wife said she'd be back by three o'clock. That's what she said. So I wait, but she ain't come. So at three, I go to look for her, but she ain't nowhere to be found. Won't well, my wife be back soon? The kid came back. So I think... Someone's holding her back, right? That priest? Guy was all like annoyed and such, so really? So now I know, like I always knew. Someone must have stolen my them there wristwatch. Eh. I'm scared, and I've got a feeling that things are only going to get worse. My wife just said you're the culprit. What? He's clearly not in his right mind. But I think we're somewhat alike in a way. No, it wasn't me. We're both, we've both lost something, but I'm not sure what. It's a cruel irony to wander around looking for something when you don't even know what it is you're looking for. It's incredibly frightening to think that he and I look alike to those around us. Uh, Zoya um, wouldn't lie to me. Why? I oughta... Um, I oughta... I oughta learn you a lesson. As I give him a look of pity, I imagine the very same look being pointed at me by Pacifica or Anya. Just thinking about it is so... Ugh. I lose my footing. It's been ages since I've last felt an earthquake. Obviously, it's all in my head. This town's never had an earthquake. <laughs> Booyah! For some reason, seriously, why? The old... Sorry, elderly man strips off his clothes and lunges at me. 
I barely dodge, but what if I didn't react in time? I'd shudder at the thought. I gotta run. I slip past the elderly man and head to Main Street. It's not a place I'd like to go, but it's much better than sticking around here. I'm seriously starting to worry that I've been sealed away in a world with just me and the elderly man. I can hear rough breathing approaching from behind. I'm so dizzy I can't get proper footing. The narrow path seems like an infinite corridor. This town only has 1,024 people, so it's not surprised that the population density is low. I'm not sure why that thought passed through my head. Guess my brain just wants to escape from reality. By the time I leap out into Bustling Main Street, I'm out of breath despite not having run that long of a distance. I don't scream for help. I wanted to, but I hesitate at the last moment. The ghosts look at me with fear in their eyes since I rush so suddenly out into Main Street. I feel like this has happened before. I can suddenly feel the cold snow through my boots again. My nose tingles. The elderly man catches up to me wearing just his undershirt. <laughs> mm, I finally gotcha! <laughs> Please stop already! I shout. Part of my brain, or rather part of me, says you should have just ignored him from the start. The elderly man stops and stares. Did my shouting catch him off guard? What? The old man's eyes begin to water, and it's not because of the snow. He's crying. Uh, why? Why am I alone? Why won't nobody love me? <laughs> his cries echo even louder than my shout. What's his problem? I want to know. I really do. This is really uncomfortable. It's like when someone points out something that you just can't unthink. I'm starting to get nervous here. I don't know. I avert my eyes and walk away. I've taken a bit of a detour, but Pacifica's house isn't too far away, and this time I'll make sure to ignore everyone. The elderly man stops crying. When I start walking, the path clears. Crunch. Crunch. The snow crackles underfoot. The ghosts chatter, their voices masked by that faint sound. I keep walking. I know the answers to your questions, little missy. I don't stop walking. Crunch. Crunch. He's bluffing. I'll tell you the town secrets. Crunch. Don't stop walking, you idiot. You want to know why you're here and what exactly this town is, don't you, little missy? I turn. Oh, boy. I turned around. I turned around, didn't I? A minor blunder. The whispers of the ghosts and all the other various smaller sounds seemed to fade into the distance. As if I had turned down the volume knob on the TV, little by little. I can even hear a static noise deep within my ears. The elderly man notices my piqued interest and hums to himself in satisfaction. The glitter in his eyes is somewhat frightening, but also somewhat intriguing. Which is why I can't just look away. Everyone, and I mean everyone's gotten used to it. But this here town's strange, don't you think? <sighs> the noise in my ears gets louder. I think it's strange, and so do you. We're the same. No. I don't want to be put on the same level as this elderly man, but that's not the only thing that's making me uncomfortable. But we are alike. Don't you think it's time we join hands? I'm scared. Why? It's probably because I'm not mentally prepared to hear the answers to the questions I've always had. Now that they're within grasp, I'm faltering. Together, we can put an end to this here sealed away air. It's a win-win situation, see? I'm curious, but I don't want to know. You know, it's like when someone at school says they know your crush's crush. In the worst case scenario, that curiosity could make me turn out like him. The elderly man takes a step forward. He reaches his arms out as if offering me salvation. Unfortunately, deep down in my heart, somewhere, I do want salvation. So, what do you say? Zzz, the noise grows louder. No, please no. I reject him twice for good measure, because I almost impulsively took him up on his offer. Why not? It's simple, you know? He takes another step forward. He grabs my hands. His hands are so much bigger than mine, and they're warmer than they look. 
I know. Why don't you be my daughter? Snap. What he said just now snaps me wide awake, as if I had woken up from a dream. The elderly man's weird undershirt, his clearly abnormal mental state, my loneliness. Well, things are a bit backwards from how I planned, but it's no biggie. He starts swinging my hands around as if giving me a double handshake. Knowing my daughter loving honey, she's sure to come back if I bring home a daughter, or else there ain't no god. <laughs> Is this some sort of scam? Maybe it isn't. But I'm getting really annoyed now. Sorry, but I've gotta go. You can't go, I... He won't let go. His grip is surprisingly tight for an elderly man. Let go! No! I ain't never letting go! Not again! I can't help you. I just need someone. Anyone, no matter who. Someone, anyone, it doesn't matter who. Those words cut deep. And that's why... La Pet Folk. I hurl the elderly man away without even thinking about it. Somehow, I just know that if someone's gripping your hands and in your face, and they just so happen to be taller and lighter than you, they're easy to throw down. But when did I learn that? The elderly man's back crashes against the wall of a building. He says only that before losing consciousness. <sighs> if it doesn't matter who it is, then pick someone. Anyone other than me. He probably can't hear me, but I just wanted to say that. I feel a bit more courageous now. But that must have lost me some points with the town's ghosts again. Ooh, oof. Oof.